Hey guys, I'm going to give a little demonstration on how to use the Sprague Tell Onki T0-6A capacitor analyzer to be able to check for capacitor leakage. Uh, okay, number one, note I have my insulation resistance set to mega ohms 50k and the meter is reading uh, almost five with absolutely nothing hooked up. Okay, this is, uh, this is not how you test a capacitor. What you want to do is you want to set your DC voltage for electrolytic leakage current test to the range that best fits your capacitor. In this case, I'm going to have a 400 volt uh, cap, so I'm going to hit the 60 to 600. All right, meter goes down to zero. I want to set my leakage current in milliamps to the least sensitive range of 60. And I want to make sure this is set to discharge so I don't electrocute myself. Now I'm going to press to read the volts and I can see it's set to a little over 400 which on my meter comes out to 400 because you can see the meter is stuck at two notches above where it's supposed to be. All right so um, notice my assistant is helping me yes it's so nice to have an assistant. First we're going to check this 400 volt Astron 0.022. It's a paper and oil capacitor, which are excellent at not leaking, even after 50 years. Okay, so I'm hooked up to my easy clip, my easy quick clips. And I'm going to hit test, and you can see the needle doesn't move, it doesn't jump, it doesn't do anything. I'm going to move from 60 to 6, still no movement in the needle, so it's safe to go up to 0.6. 0.6, still no movement, so now I can go to the most sensitive range of 0.06, and there's still absolutely no movement. Okay, so now I know that this capacitor is not leaking any DC current from this point to that point. The DC current is all being stopped by the capacitor, and none of it goes to ground. I'm going to hit discharge, count to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and now I'm going to disconnect this capacitor. And now I'm going to hook up this 600 volt uh, 0.1 MF Astron. I'm not going to change the voltage because I know this leaks. So, okay, I've quickly changed. And now I'm going to change back to the least sensitive because I don't want to peg my needle. Because that's probably how this ended up getting two notches off is by somebody pegging it. So, um, now that I'm set to 60, I can hit test. And boom, the needle moves. All right, I'm going to change it to 6, and now you can see the needle has moved up to about uh, 4.5. And so that means I can safely go to the next range, which is 0.6, and I can get a real accurate reading on the leakage of this. The leakage of this capacitor at 400 volts, not even the rated 600, is almost 0.4 milliamps. And I would consider that unacceptable myself. Uh, if I go to 0.6, it's just going to peg the needle, and I don't want to do that. So, I'm going to end this test. I'm going to hit to discharge. Count to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now I can disconnect this capacitor. You don't want capacitors that leak DC current, because that is the whole purpose of a capacitor. You have one side of your circuit is going to be the power for that circuit and it's going to be in DC. Your signal is going to be AC and it's going to be passing through that DC through the coupling capacitor to your tubes and you want only the AC signal to make it through. So that's why if I was to use that capacitor it would be allowing the DC to go through into the circuit that's expecting AC and it's going to wreak havoc. So anyway, to avoid red plating don't use leaky caps. This concludes this test. I'm shutting everything off. Have a nice day.